card, and that Wait. Means, if I play the two, that means I'm clearly like running out. Like yeah. those are kind of stupid. Yeah. So you need to know and memorize that I don't have those two in the But here's another. Game. But here's another way to know that you ran out. If you play a really high card, like an ace or a, or a king for no reason, like she came out with her own king or ace, right? And then she didn't play like a three or a two or anything after. It was just like, why would you do that? Right? It's weird. Another thing you want to do at the beginning is if you can get rid of your whole suit, try to do it at the beginning, especially if you have a Welcome to the advanced video, part two of my two-part training. This is gonna help you jump into any Sahara that you want and start playing Licha with the big boys. It can be very tricky and it's very hard to learn. That's why I made this video because there's no real way for you to actually teach someone while you're playing. So you can't go to a party and just sit there and be like, hey, can you teach me how to play? Everyone's gonna be like, yeah, and then they won't actually talk to you because they can't tell you what the signals are and what they're doing and why. So this video could really help you get started. Only the cards that are played, again, right, can actually speak. So they're the only ones that have a voice. You can't actually like slide a card over or slam it or something. You shouldn't be doing that. That's typically considered cheating, right? So you have to know what the signals are. There's a few different kinds of signals. I'm gonna walk you through a few scenarios to help you kind of grasp the concept of how to read what's going on. Now let's get started. Three things you must have down to play this with anyone at the next Sahara that you're at, okay? The first thing is the Shriek signals, okay? The second thing is responding to those signals with you know low cards the proper way or high cards depending on what you need to do, okay? And the third thing is to deliberately not respond to your opponent's signals. Deliberately not respond to them, right? So those are the three things you have to do. And you have to understand that sometimes the cards will take over, right? You may not be able to do what your Shriek is asking you and he might get pissed off, but don't take it personal and just try to have fun. This is a game you have to really try to have fun with because it's kind of tough, right? Especially at first. Make sure that you always keep the scores balanced, okay? So don't allow your Shriek to eat a bunch and then wait till way in the end when he's like 70, 80 and you're 20, right? To start eating for him. Like, always keep it balanced. If he eats one and you have to, and you can choose whether or not to feed him the Licha or take it, just take it, right? If you're a beginner, you want to make sure that you understand, for the most part, people play from the biggest cards down to the lower cards, right? So if someone plays a low card, it typically means they're running out of that suit, right? That's the, the general idea. Now, the better you get and the more that you play with different people, the more you'll understand that, you know, they may be bluffing or they may be doing something to throw you off. But for the most part, the lower the cards get, the more likely they're running out of the suit. The smaller cards and the really big cards they speak the loudest, right? So you don't have to memorize like the seven, eights, and nines, and tens, and stuff like that at first. Just remember like the top three cards of each suit and the th bottom three. So you should remember when the two was played, or if like who played the two of hearts, or who played the two of whatever, right? So whoever played those, then you know, oh, they probably ran out of that suit. If you understand these concepts, you'll understand how to play with the Shriek, and that's the most important thing. The more you remember that, the more you'll be able to remember the cards. The more you remember the cards, the better you'll be at the game. That's how it works. And it's a memory driven game. If you forget every three seconds, you can't play this game. This game isn't for you. Go play something else. I suffer from short term memory loss. Yes! That's exactly what you say. Now I wanna give you some advanced tips on the gift, okay? During the gift, um, a lot of times you'll find yourself having like the queen of diamonds and the king of diamonds, and let's say the ace of diamonds also, right? What you can actually do if you have a lot of diamond cards, what you can do is you can give away just the ace, right? And then you can use the king. If you count the cards, you can use the king to actually chase the ace. Now, that's risky, right? Because if you count wrong, you're going to you're going <laughs> to you might take a <laughs> you might take a leap and then eat the 10, right? But uh, for the most part, that's one way of doing it. So, you can actually if you have let's say three um Bastoni cards, you have three spades and um, and then you have the king, which is a fourth card, and then you have the ace, which is a fifth card, right? You can gift the ace and then use all four cards to chase the ace, okay? That's one way of doing it. Another thing that you wanna keep in mind is there's a lot of diamond, like, gifts, right? Why? Because there's four. There's the ace, there's the king, there's the queen, there's the jack that are all above the 10, right? So probability-wise, you have double the chances of getting a diamond card than getting a spade, right? Than getting like the king or ace, okay? Um, so because of that, you might wanna think 
twice about giving away the diamond because you might get a diamond back, right? Like there's a big probability that you might be receiving a high diamond card. So sometimes it's smart to expect a diamond as a gift, right? Um, and, and, and also be very aware of what types of cards your partner, like your opponent is giving you, right? Because the whole game, you're gonna be getting gifts from the same person and people usually gift in a very similar way. So you can start to expect what that person is gonna be gifting you and then use that to your advantage. You never wanna gift anything that's under the licha or a low heart, okay? Just don't do that. Like, even the seven of hearts is like, you should probably never gift that. Anything lower than that is definitely don't ever gift it. Um, everything that's like below the, the queen of spades and below the 10 of diamonds, don't ever gift it. Those are power cards. Those are great cards, you can chase them. When you find out where the, you know, where the 10 is or where the queen is, if it's not with your partner, you just drop them, right? You just keep chasing them with those. So those are chase cards, those are the most powerful cards. You always keep those, okay? Now remember, if your present contains like a high bestowny, right? And I have the jack, okay? What I might do is I might play, instead of chasing him with the jack first, like going like highest to lower, what I might do is I might play the eight first, okay? And then, and then someone else might eat with like the ace or king, like the guy to my left who's gonna eat last, he might eat that round with an ace or a king or something, right? But because I have the jack on the next round, I'm actually gonna be able to eat it and I'm gonna be able to like, I'm gonna play the jack and it's gonna eat and I'll be able to chase again. So that's a strategic way to like play a low card first, right? Then come back, follow through and contain control over the game as you're chasing. So if you have jack 10, nine, eight, those are great cards because then you could just continuously eat and then just keep chasing if they have a lot of cards, right? So don't be too hard on yourselves if you forget what was played at first. It happens to all of us. and. The more you can focus and be present and know what your partner wants and the more you understand these rules that I'm about to go over right now, the more that it'll help you narrow down and be present and remember a lot of the cards, okay? If your partner throws an ace, all right, and you have the king of that suit, okay? Let's say he throws the ace of clubs or the ace of hearts, something like, like that, right? Which is typical. He throws the ace, if you have the king or the queen or something, someone else throws the king, just hold on to it so that you can eat the next round. You don't wanna like just throw away the highest card, right? Sometimes holding the highest card is very beneficial. So you hold on to the king, you let him eat that first round, right? He might throw like a two afterwards or he might throw a three or four, which is kind of indicating, hey, I'm running out, right? Like I just wanted to get rid of these cards. Then you, then you take the king, you eat that round and now you have control to give him back what he wants and you drop a low, club for him okay that's one way of doing it if he just drops the ace and then he doesn't play something afterwards he may have just had the ace okay your partner could be getting chased by the opponent okay so let's say your opponent plays diamonds and he's chasing your shriek on diamonds okay but you have the 10 of licha so you have the 10 of diamonds right he's chasing them so that you can drop the 10 on him because he probably gave him a jack queen king whatever it is that he gave him right now because that's happening if you're able to eat the round that first round when he chases them eat it and if you have a lot of cards with you right because it'll put you at risk if you have a lot of cards play another diamonds card okay why because that is signaling to your partner he has to understand this if he doesn't know how to play then don't do this right but play another diamond card that's signaling to him that i have the licha don't worry about it don't trip just eat this round and you'll be safe so if he has the king or something you drop diamond again you have the 10 so he's not going to be He's not gonna be harmed. He'll just, he'll play the king. The person to the right will play something else and, and then he'll get away from uh, his opponent. He'll get away from being chased. Um, so that's one way of saving your partner, <laughs> all right? There's a few other ways. There's a lot of other ways, but I'm gonna give you the main ones, right? That's a big one where I have the licha, my partner's getting chased on that suit. I play the, the same suit for him. He just drops it, right? That's it. Now, another big thing that you have to remember, all right, is if someone plays, like if, you're, if your shriek plays like spades and then you play spades and then he just stops playing spades out of nowhere and he plays something else, right? Regardless of the size of the card or what he plays, he's probably just trying to get rid of those cards, right? And what happens is you want to return that card to him, okay? When you go to return a card to your partner, it has to be a low card. If you don't have a low card, you cannot return it. Like basically avoid playing that suit because he's probably gonna drop a licha, 
right? So what's the point of returning what your shriek wants if he's just gonna feed you the licha? It's, it's, you know, it's pointless. So play a small card. If you have a two, a three, right? A two and a three means you're safe. Why? Because that means unless someone runs out. So like, let's say for example, if you play a four, okay? And the opponent to your right plays two and the opponent to your left plays the three and your partner plays the licha, you just ate it because you ate the, you played a four and they played a three and a two, right? So you have the highest card in Bistani that you eat that, right? Or whatever, whatever suit it may be, you're gonna eat it, right? So you have to be conscious of what you return to your shriek. If your shriek is asking for something, if you don't have a low card of that suit, don't play that suit. <laughs> be really careful not to play that suit. And same goes with if another person asks for a suit and they want a small suit and you don't have the small number of that suit, avoid that suit. So now it's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna play something else because for no reason, right? Just because I can't play those two suits, all I can play is this, I'm just gonna play that now. You have to be aware of what everyone drops and you have to look for the low cards, remember them and look for the high cards and remember them, right? Because if the high cards, if the high cards are all gone, then who cares, right? Like then you know. If you count up the, the cards and you have a good number of them in your hand, if you have like four or five like spades in your hand, then when, when the spades drop, count how many there are total because if they add up to 13, then you know that those are all the cards, right? So if you, if you saw uh, seven cards or eight cards being played and you have four cards, that means there's only one card left out there. And if that card is an ace or a king, then you can just take that queen and drop it because you know one of them is going to eat it, especially if your partner got rid of all of his. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, why would you do that? <laughs> oh, oh yes! The ace or king. Hell yeah! Uh, Playing around with hearts and you had that the because whole time. Because you eat that. Yeah, really. This is something you have to be careful of also, okay? If your partner is chasing on a suit, you never want to play that suit. Um, the reason being is that if you play the suit, you will actually save the other person, right? So you will save him because he'll, he'll eat last. So the person your partner is chasing is to the right of your partner. That means he's to the left of you. So when you play, it goes counterclockwise, it ends with that part, with that person. So if you play the same suit, let's say he gave him the ace of spades and he's stuck on the ace of spades, he's about to make him drop the licha on it, right? And he's chasing him, he's chasing him, he's chasing him, and then you get the, you get, you win around, right? You eat around, and then you play spades, you're gonna save him. So you never wanna save the opponent. Make sure you don't play a, a suit if they're asking for that suit. So if someone um, plays a low card, like a low heart or a low spade or something, that means they're asking for that suit. Another way that someone can ask for a suit is if they play a really high card for no reason and then they stop. So like anything that's like a like a hearts, right? No one wants to eat hearts, okay? If someone just plays the ace of hearts, they eat around and then they go and play like the eight of spades or something, right? That means more than likely they just ran out of hearts. Like they only had one heart and it was the ace of clubs or ace of whatever, like ace of spades or the ace of hearts and they just drop it and then they stop. That means they just wanted to get rid of that card. They got rid of it. They ate the four points, but they want to like, they want to drop something else when they lose their, when someone plays hearts. So don't be that guy to play hearts when your opponent's asking for hearts. Be aware of if someone plays that card, it's always for a purpose. And everything you play should be for a purpose. If it's not, you probably don't know what's going on in the game, right? So you want to be like, be alert. And if you don't know what's going on, to try not to eat, right? Because then you, you're gonna you're gonna have big decisions to make on what you're gonna play next. Implement that and just knock out your opponents. It's about like just force feeding your opponents without any hiccups and being like really um, aware of what's going on and present. That's why I chose to teach this game because it's a social game that we all play and we love to play. And it's a very like. You gotta be zoned in. You gotta be zoned to play this game. You can't you can't be distracted and on your phone and doing whatever and just being like, oh, I don't care about thinking. I'm not that's not this kind of game. That's not what this game's all about. So I made one more video, okay, because I was like, how can I possibly teach this game? It's very difficult to just, you know, explain like this. Um, I wanted to make it very easy. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna play a full game and I'm gonna record the whole thing and then I'm gonna talk in voiceover what I was thinking and what's going on during the game as it's going on. Now, you're gonna see how bad I suck, but that's <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So click on the link right here if you wanna see the examples and get a lot better before you start playing and practicing. But as long as you have these core principles down, then these advanced principles will help you jump into a game, and even if you lose, like you'll understand why. Like They'll be able to explain it to you, and you'll be like, oh, okay, and then you'll just jump back into the next round, right? So, you know, get knocked down, 
get yourself back up and you got to get up in order to get knocked down so just keep getting knocked down baby stay bored you know what it is pgc i'm out friday i'm out <laughs> the ananja the yum love